Hello again! Welcome to another playthrough video. If you'd like to see somebody playing Sonic the Hedgehog 2 whilst talking about it, you've come to the right place. So, uh, I'm going to be playing this uh, with Sonic and Tails, just for the challenge. So let's get started. Uh, yeah, so this game came out in 1992 for the Mega Drive or Genesis console. Uh, came out on what was known as Sonic Tuesday, because it came out on a Tuesday. Sequel to Sonic the Hedgehog 1, obviously. Um, there aren't many games that I feel I know inside out. You know, like the back of my hand, but this is probably one of them. Um, so I'm going to be doing an all Chaos Emeralds run. Do you know this one was up here? Here we go. Um, an all Chaos Emeralds run. It's possible to get all Chaos Emeralds on the first level. There are, to my knowledge, eight star posts in the Emerald Hill Zone. Uh, three in the first act and five on the second act. And of course there's seven Chaos Emeralds, so even if I mess one of these up, I can still do it. Um, yeah, so, 1992, wow. Uh, this game was developed by the uh, American arm of Sega, um, Sega Technical Institute, which I believe was headed up by uh, Mark Cerny, who now works for Sony. So, uh, yeah, small world. Um, these these special stages, I mean, they're incredible for for the time and for the hardware they were running on. Um, the fact that they could get a, a sort of pseudo 3D ring tunnel out of the Mega Drive hardware is pretty incredible. I mean, yeah, they look a little bit a little bit janky by today's standards, but you know, I think they they're great fun. Some of my favourite special stages from from Sonic. Obviously, a lot of the same music was carried over from Sonic One. Um, some of the level themes, obviously, there was a Green Hill Zone. Now there's an Emerald Hill Zone. Um, the music is very memorable. Uh, right, I'm going to try to find the second. Uh, star post now. Which I think is. I think it's down here. Bear with me. Yeah, there we go. Star post number two. Uh, Sonic 2, of course, introduced the character of Tails. Um, a successful sidekick character, I think. You know, very easy to introduce a character that everybody hates. Um, but I think with Tails they did a pretty good job. It enabled a fun two-player mode. So obviously in these stages you've got to get enough rings to clear each checkpoint. Now when you're playing with Tails following you, um, he does just that, he follows you, he copies what you do, but he's about a second behind you all the time. So that can be a little bit dangerous. And obviously, you don't need him necessarily to collect rings. Um, every time you get hit, you lose 10 rings that you've collected, but the counts are separate. But, I think the, the game difficulty kind of um, assumes that you're playing this with somebody else using the second controller. I think I've done it. Yeah. Um, and so the, 
totals that you need to collect in each special stage are a bit higher. Which is why it's harder to get all the Chaos Emeralds if you're playing with Sonic and Tails. Which is why I'm doing it, for the challenge. Right, there's one more star post in this act. You just need to get enough rings to, uh, to find it. Uh, right. to go back and get some more rings. Most dangerous enemies in this level are those monkeys. Okay, I should have enough now. Here we go. If anyone knows of any other star posts in the Emerald Hill, let me know. As far as I'm aware, there's only eight. Ah, oh, bugger, I fell off. Getting over eager now. Find the monkeys. Here we go. Number three. Yeah, a lot of this game I've committed to memory, like muscle memory. I just just know where everything is. I'm a little bit more patchy on the special stages. But I vaguely recall where everything is. Incidentally, if you haven't checked out the smartphone ports of Sonic 2, so that's the Apple and Android um, versions, they're actually remakes. Um, some very clever uh, hackers turned programmers um, called Taxman and Stealth, who went on to make Sonic Mania, um, recreated Sonic 1, Sonic 2 and Sonic CD for uh, various platforms and um, the version of Sonic 2 on there is amazing it's like a ground up remake of the game and all the special stages like these have been recreated in you know like a proper 3D engine um, there's extra modes, there's time trials, you can play it as Knuckles. Um, and they even added uh, an extra level. They added the Hidden Palace zone. Um, it, it's a brilliant version. Um, and it's in widescreen and so on. Uh, so check that out if you haven't. It's really good. Unfortunately it's not available on PC or consoles. It's only on smart devices, which is a shame. I hope they do bring it to other platforms at some point. That would be nice. Um, but I am playing the Mega Drive version now. The version I remember. So there we go, that's Act 1 done. Not a particularly fast time, but I've got three Chaos Emeralds, so I'm doing alright. Yeah, I remember... Um, I don't think I got this game... As soon as it was released, um, I'm old enough to remember it being released, um, in 1992, I think I probably got it early the next year. Uh, but I do remember seeing it running in a, in a shop, because back then, back then the only way you could see a game running was to actually go into a shop and watch it being on a, either played on a demo pod or on a track sequence or something like that. Uh, right, bear with me. I need my first star post. I'll show you where that is. Did you know this was up here? Here we go. It's the first one. The thing about the star posts is you have to get them in the right order. Because if you go too far ahead and get a later one first, you can't then go back and get an earlier star pose because it'll already be active. It's 
really tapping into some old memories now. I'm trying to remember where all the rings are going to appear. I mean, that's one way the, um, the smartphone remake is uh, improved, is that you can actually see the rings coming from a little bit further away. In this one, they practically uh, materialise on top of you. Of course, the risky way to get these, but, um, oh well. That's life without a bit of risk. Damn it. I think I'm alright. I'm okay. What's really annoying is if you if you get hit and Tails doesn't, you end up in the back row and Tails is stuck in front. That's a nightmare when that happens. Really can't remember which side they appear on now. I used to, I used to know this. I used to like memorise where all the rings are going to be. Oh dear! Come on. Ooh, just about. <laughs> yeah. So Sonic 2. I think I first saw Sonic 2 running in, um, running in a shop. Watch it on a on a TV screen. Um. And I was transfixed. It was, um, I think it was the Aquatic Ruin Zone that was being played. And, uh, I just remember thinking it looked incredible. With the parallax scrolling with the leaves underwater. Uh, I was like, oh my god, I want this. Right, I need to get some more rings to activate the next star post. Probably without dying. I can get back up here. There we go. Yeah, because the next star post is... Ooh! There with me. Didn't mean to do that. Come on. Find the fish. The next star post is on top of the second loop. There we go. Okay, it's going to start getting a bit harder now. Once you get into the two green and orange ones, that's where it gets harder. Some of these were clearly designed for two people to, to play them. You cannot get all these rings by yourself. Ooh. Here we go. Could have been worse. Other side, I think. Generally, the rings appear on the outside. Oh, just about. Oh my god, 200. And then middle, and then right. Think of the big loop the loop in this one. A few more rings on the ceiling. More rings on the ceiling. Here we go. No, I haven't done it. Damn! Oh, that's harder than I remember. It really is. Woo! That is harder than I remember. That, that is definitely one where they expect you to uh, have someone helping you, I think.
Right, I can still do it on Emerald Hill. I can. It's just become a bit more difficult. Oh yeah, so obviously the um, spin dash or dash attack was uh, was new for Sonic 2. One of the many things that made the game feel a lot faster than the original. Right, so when you fail a special stage, you come back to the same one to try it again. Okay, come on Tails, don't let me down now. Kind of, you've got to kind of utilize tails. Ah um, no, now he's stuck in front. No, no. <laughs> oh, I see it. I can't get all the emeralds on uh, Emerald Hill now. I mean, it's not a problem. I'll easily get them by the end of the game. But uh. I feel like I've let you down. I've let myself down. Get up here. Okay. Right, let's go find the next one. Might need a few more rings first, actually. Two, uh, two more. There are two more. I need three more emeralds and then two more self hope. Yeah, right, okay, this is where it is. again. So yeah, as I was saying, you've got to try to utilize Tails on this level. Get him to pick up as many rings as you can that you can't get. So do a little wiggle like that and he'll pick up the ones you miss. But then also move him out the way fast enough so that he doesn't get hit by the bombs. Which kind of requires anticipating where the bombs are going to be, which is easier said than done. On the wrong side. Too many bombs after this. Oh, just wow. Yeah, that's much easier. If you're playing as just a solo character like just Sonic or just Tails. 
you don't have to get as many rings, and it's much easier. That was, that was very hard. That was a little bit stressful. You can see why they introduced the dash attack. It's definitely needed. Okay, one more star post. And it's right before the end. This one's a little bit easier, but it's still pretty hard. Ignore tails for this one. There we go. Hurrying this by myself. I think I stick left, stick left, yep, yeah. and then right. Oh no, then the loop. That's harder than it looks to get round. You can't just hold down the direction button. But then you go too fast. Ah, oh, damn it. Pick a side, man. Pick a side. Now yeah, we're good. 220. Jump early and grab him. There we go. Alright, I've got enough. Easily got enough. There we go. That's fine. Damn, one emerald short. Oh well. Amusing as it is to play the Emerald Hill Zone boss as Super Sonic, it's not something I'm going to do this time. Let's grab a couple of rings and then take on a Robotnik. Was he called Robotnik back then, or was he, was he Eggman? Is that a regional difference or a era difference? I don't know. Let me know. Wallop. So, um, I would just say, it, regarding the visual design of Sonic 2, the, I don't think it's as strong in terms of its look as Sonic 1. Like, if you remember Sonic 1's Green Hill Zone, you remember the palm trees? They were like these really cool geometric shapes, you know, there were checkerboard patterns everywhere. It was a really sort of funky design. Whereas with Sonic 2, it's got a slightly more messy design. I mean, if you look at the grass there, you look at the trees, they don't really stand out in quite the same way. Uh, Chemical Plant Zone, on the other hand, very strong design. Obviously, it follows in that, um, in that sort of busy theme. Uh, lots of little details and mechanical uh, decals and everything. And uh, excellent, excellent music, of course. Yeah. Now I'm a little bit more flaky with regards to where the star posts are on, um, on Chemical Plant. Um... 
In fact, Act 1, I honestly couldn't tell you where any of the star pipes are. I can't remember, I can never remember. I normally sort of accidentally take the short route through this level and then miss them. Um, but you can see with, with sections like that how much faster this game is compared to Sonic 1. Um, one of the things they changed was removing the speed cap on Sonic's maximum speed when running. And normally in Sonic 1 you want to go fast down a hill, you have to roll into a ball. You sort of lose all your, all your friction and you just go much faster. In Sonic 2 you can just run, you can run down hills. Uh, maintain top speed, so it's a it's a faster game, and uh, the level design, um, of course, is much faster as well. There's a lot more ramps and loops. Right, I know where a few of the star posts are on this level, so let's see if I can, if I can find them. A bit too fast there, got stuck. Thanks down. Oh yeah, Act 2 of course famously has the uh, underwater section. I say water, it's like it to be top hit weight or something like that. Alright, there's a the star post down here. Here we go. This is quite often the one where I get the final emerald. I don't manage to get them all on Emerald Hill. I, uh, I forced myself to memorise where all the rings are in this one. Back in the day, I had it all written down. Like, it's left, right, left, left, right, right. I used to find this one particularly challenging, but um, I think this is easier than some of the other ones now. Yeah. 190, okay. You pretty much just go left and right and occasionally stay on the same side. Two, three, four, five, and move. Yeah, easily done. In fact, I've already got, <laughs> I've already got the 210 rings on each of the, the final bit. Gotta avoid the bombs. Woo. Jump. If in doubt, jump. Ah. Oh, so much for that. Alright, I've done it. And of course you get the flashy screen at the end to signify you've got the very last Chaos Emerald. I remember the first time I got this, I was like, what? Sonic can change into Super Sonic? I was like, what the hell is Super Sonic? Well, collect 50 rings and you'll find out. This is not a good level to be Super Sonic, mind you. Um, there's a lot of, uh, 
got a death trap. This is a section that messed a few people up back in the day. Um, a lot of people drowned trying to get out of this. If you just play it nice and slow, nice and calm, you get out no problem. There is a way to uh, shortcut that and do a very long jump from below up onto that platform without having to go through the water. Um, but I was not able to do that this time. I may not even get enough room to be supersonic before the end of the level, but that's fine. Second blue boss. Yeah, this is a weird boss. He only attacks you, you've got to watch out for his thing. The most dangerous the most dangerous thing about this boss is the floor. Not him. The amount of times I've just bounced off him at a weird angle and fallen through the floor is crazy. I'll tell you what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna save. I'm playing on an emulator, I'm just gonna save it just in case the game crashes or gets stuck or something, which does have a tendency to happen in Sonic 2. There we go, let's see. So if anything does go wrong, I can go back to a, to an earlier save. So yeah, Aquatic Ruin Zone. This, this is a zone I first saw running on a, on a demo pod or, or something in a shop. Um, and it just sort of looks amazing. I and mean, I just love the layers of parallax scrolling that you did here. And there's Super Sonic! <laughs> Again, another level where Super Sonic is probably not that useful is underwater. I mean, sometimes he's just so fast that it will get you killed. In fact, this game is a little bit buggy sometimes, um, in particular when it comes to uh, Super Sonic. I don't know if it was a late edition or... Yes, alright. I'm fine. Okay. But if you've got more than 50 rings when you cross the signpost, you cross the signpost, you turn back into normal Sonic, you run back on again and jump and you will turn into Super Sonic for a split second and then get stuck in the air, hovering, unable to move. And because you can't move, you can't walk off the screen, and therefore um, the level doesn't end. And you get stuck forever on a... on a... permanent, you know, never-ending end of level three. And of course, because you've already crossed the signpost, the time doesn't run down, so you can't run out the clock. And you have to turn the game off. So it's a... You know, by today's standards, that's a pretty bad bug. Um, I think it was fixed in uh, some of the sort of remakes and things, but yeah. Look at all those leaves. I love the theming of this level, I think it's um, I think it's so cool. Oh goodness. Cool, 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 cool. Thing is even Supersonic needs to breathe. So uh gotta stop, grab a bubble, move on. Significantly easier as Super Sonic. Also significantly easier um, to jump on that pillar at the beginning. Although if you are Super Sonic, you can just jump straight up because Super Sonic has a much higher jump.
So, Casino Night Zone. This, uh, of course, is carrying the theme from Sonic 1's Spring Yard Zone. And I think it does the idea kind of justice, you know, they've introduced things like the, uh, the flippers and the um, ring machines. I got the worst luck with these things. Some of them only give you points. Yeah, it feels a bit more like a pinball machine. Hey look, Tails have gone weird. <laughs> yeah. It, it's one of the many bugs in this game. This it, It's quite a glitchy game. Particularly with how Tails reacts and look, now he's flying but he's walking. You know, he's got the wrong animation. Where is he? There he is. You know, and then once he lands, he's fine, but it's a bit weird sometimes. Now that I've got the Chaos Emerald, I should be able to whiz through the rest of these levels pretty quickly. Yeah, I don't know whether you wanted to watch somebody whizzing through Sonic 2 levels really, really quickly, or uh, whether more of a, a slow strategy type video would, would be more useful. I don't know, but there we go, that's what I'm doing. I'm not going to jump now. Because I've got 53 rings and the game would freeze. So, you know, got to be careful. I'll try to show you a few things that I found, like the shoes over there. I've got the ring, ring machine up here. Oh dear. Oh, I'm lucky. And there's a points machine. There we go. Yeah. I'd say it's fairly pointless, but evidently not. Me. I think there might be a... Yep, there we go. So I've not played this for a little while, but... Um, yeah, it's a game I have a sort of muscle memory for. Um, this is a lot of people's favourite Sonic game. I don't know, what do you think? Is this your favourite favourite Sonic game? I would say it's not my favourite Sonic game. Um, I like it more than Sonic 1, but only just. Um, it's, it's a longer game than Sonic 1, I'm pretty sure. It has more zones, uh, but of course each zone only has two not three, so I don't know how it works out in the end. Another, uh, another hidden hole in the wall there. This bit is of course significantly easier and supersonic, but I'm running low on rings, so then you've got to think, do I hold on to as many rings as I can and, and take on the boss and supersonic? Or do I lose my rings? It might be a good idea to lose my rings and then pick up a few more and then fight the boss um, with some rings. Because if you lose your rings during the boss fight, then you've got no rings and you, you may die. There we go. A couple of rings on the way down. This 
is quite a hard this is quite a hard boss if you're not invincible. Um, generally I would say avoid the flippers and just use the wall. And then just do things like that. And just jump off and hit him. So you gotta watch out for the the bomb that he drops. Uh, and avoid him on these. But Tails helped me out there, so that's that's pretty good. I've picked up any continues yet. So in Sonic 2, the continues um, you get at the end of each level if if you've picked up a hundred rings or or something else or completed it within a certain time. You get a certain score at the end of the level. You get a continue. It's quite generous with continues, as I recall. I think I, I feel Hill, Hilltop Zone has a stronger design. Um, quite a bold look compared to Emerald Hill. I think it's probably the stronger of the two. Um, in terms of level design, it's not bad. It's not bad. Um, you get a few of these other things going on. A lot of lava, a lot of these little uh, trolley things. Good one for Super Sonic. Here we go. <coughs> Although this is this is another level that can be a bit buggy, a bit glitchy. Um, I remember, and, and you're quite far into the game at this point, bear in mind, but um, I remember playing this on the PS2, on an actual PS2 console, uh, PS2, sorry, what the hell am I talking about? On an actual Mega Drive console, the original cartridge, and I got to this level and I attacked one of those um, purple dinosaur enemies, um, I can't remember what they're called. Uh, but yeah, you know, the ones you can jump on their backs and you have to hit them on the head to kill them. And as soon as I hit it, the game froze. And I thought, oh my god, what has happened? One of these things, here we go. Obviously it didn't freeze that time. But um, I think it is a known glitch where attacking certain enemies can cause the game to lock up. And uh, yeah, of course, there were no save states. Back then, you couldn't save your game on the cartridge, so you just had to uh, you just had to live with it. Sorry, sucks to be you. Start the game again. many games that I know well enough to be able to do that. There aren't many games that I can actually say I'm quite good at, but I think Sonic 2 is one of them. If I do say so myself. Yeah, it's just another one where the boss is significantly easier if you are Super Sonic. You can just stand there and he kills himself. Yeah. 
Did Mystic play you next? Yeah. Ah, uh, yes. Mystic Cave. What a level. Incredible music. It's almost a shame to turn into Supersonic at this one because then you just miss out on the awesome background music. But such is life, here we go. It's almost worth doing a no chaos emerald run just so you can get to listen to the normal um, background music. level with more than 100 rings. Should get a continue for that. There we go. Not that I particularly need it, but all the same. Yeah, so this game was um, this game was developed alongside Sonic CD, I think, because when um, when the American arm of Sega took over development, I'm pretty sure the Japanese team continued working on Sonic CD, which actually came out later. But to me, Sonic CD always looked and felt like a Sonic One sequel, or or even a Sonic One mod. Um, just in terms of its look, its level design and so on. Whereas Sonic 2 felt quite different. And that's probably because, uh, you know, it had the different team working on it. But I think, um, I think the series uh, producer, director, uh, Yuji Naka, I think he was involved quite heavily on it anyway. No, it's kind of a, I think it was like a collaboration between the American and the Japanese team, but it wasn't Sonic Team, the original Sonic Team that made it. And if you think, it came out like, what, a year after Sonic 1, which, I mean, it's pretty good going. I know games take a lot longer to make now than they did back then, but still. That's... Yes, so if you're playing the, uh, the the Retro Engine remake, the smartphone port of Sonic 2, um, on this level, if you fall down one of the pits, you skip this part of Mystic Cave and you end up in the um, brand new, uh, what's it called, Hidden Palace, Hidden Palace Zone, which they added, uh, the developers added to the the smartphone version of the game, which is a really cool thing, because Hidden Palace was going to be one of the levels on Sonic 2. Um, it's the, you know, there are incomplete versions of it, you know, out there, um, leaked. Uh, I appear to be stuck. Oh no. Damn. Uh, yes, Hidden, Hidden Palace never made the final game. Um, so it was as a sort of homage to that preview build. It was recreated um, for the smartphone version, and I think that's probably what got Taxman and Self the job on Sonic Mania: the fact that they can make new levels and new bosses and make it feel like a genuine product, a continuation of of Sega's own work. So good on them.
No, I almost wish you could toggle Supersonic off. He is a bit annoying. He just eats through all your rings. The music is repetitive. He's awkward to control. Yes, he's invincible and he's fast, blah 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 blah. But he's a bit annoying. Come on. And of course you get stuck in these little hairdryer things. And uh, you can't move. Your rings are ticking down and you can't do anything about it. Okay, I'm going to see if I can replicate a glitch, a very amusing glitch, um, on this level. Right, here we go. No, didn't, didn't manage it. Right, I'm going to try that again. No! Nah, I missed it. Okay. I don't think I can get back to... No. Okay. I'll have to, um, I'll have to try and capture it another time. There was a very, a very amusing glitch where if you hit that, um... You hit one of those little hairdryer things in just the right place. When you fall back off... You, you land on the spikes, you fall back in the hairdryer thing, and when you land, you suddenly discover... Oh, am I back to... No. Oh yes, I am. Ha 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 ha! I can try it again. Okay, let's see if I can do this again. Ah, it didn't work. I need to land. I need to land on it. screen to reset it and then try again. It's a very odd glitch. Ah! Obviously it requires you to have some rings to be able to do it. So, uh... okay. Try it again. I'm not going to spend too long trying this, but it is an amusing glitch, if I can show you what it does. Yeah, the idea is to land on the spikes. Probably becoming a bit boring to watch, but it'll be worth it, I promise. Started now, so we'll finish. <laughs> nah, 
I don't think I can do it. I used to be able to do this. You make yourself land in the little hairdryer thingy. Anyway, what, what happens is when you land after sort of, you sort of fall out of the thing and you land and you realise that your movement has suddenly become really exaggerated. Um, you move really fast, you jump really high, um, like all the physics have gone weird. Um, and it wears off. If you, uh, as soon as you hit a spring, or something like that, it wears off. And it's just a bit, of a bit of a challenge to see how long you can keep the effect going for. But, yeah, it's a really odd glitch. Yeah, shame I wasn't able to do it. I'll, I'll try it again, maybe I'll do another video. Might do a... Uh, <sighs> Might do a video of uh, tips and tricks and boss strategies and things like that. But for now, I'm just trying to get through this. I think I might be Metropolis Zone after this. Which is, uh, you know, getting into the end game territory. I should, uh, I should save it in a while. Another one that's much easier as Supersonic. Gotta be careful not to fall into the sinking, um, Oil though. I should be alright rings wise. It's obviously a much harder level if you've got no rings. So there we go. Okay, I'm gonna save it here and then carry on. Bear with me. Okay, so this is Metropolis Zone. This is the only zone in the game to have three acts instead of two acts. <clears throat> and they are quite long. These things, they're deadly though. Things hiding in the walls to watch out for. And of course, Supersonic. Actually, Supersonic makes this level quite a lot easier. Uh, as long as you don't get yourself crushed. Quite a confusing level, actually. This one. Leave tails behind, I don't need you tails. Mm. 
Hold on a second. Is that? Yep. No. Just a star base. In this way. It's one of those levels that loops. Ooh, see that was weird. Another infinite uh, looping drop. Uh, Sonic 2 added anything else uh, that wasn't in Sonic 1. So obviously you've got the, <coughs> the spin dash attack if you press down and jump. You can rev up and go off to a flying start. Um, I mean I think the generally the graphics are improved. There's a lot more um, a variety of animation. Uh, Obviously, there's all the new supersonic sprites. Uh, there's a two-player split-screen mode, which I used to have great fun with back in the day. I used to really annoy my sister with that. new. Yeah, so player two, or controller two, can control tails in the single player mode. Um, you can't do much as tails, but you can destroy enemies and collect rings <coughs> and generally get in the way, press buttons. Um, tails doesn't have um, flight. I mean, he'll fly around after you like that, but you can't actually make him fly. Not until Sonic 3. That's Act 2 done. So, as I said, one more act for Metropolis Zone. multiple routes through the level, which was similar to um, Scrap Brain Zone in Sonic 1, there were multiple routes there as well. <clears throat> Miss that? Oh no. 
Ah, sometimes you've got to take a hit there. I don't normally come this way, actually. I, I'm not that familiar with this route. Those things are so annoying. Okay, not much chance of uh, getting Supersonic here, which is actually a pretty good idea because Supersonic in Act 3 of this zone can be a bit of a liability. Um, there's a long stretch of no rings leading up to the final boss. And uh, you don't want to be fighting the boss of this level with no rings. So it's best to remain normal Sonic uh, and just collect some rings and, and fight the boss that way. Trap, this place, a death trap. Not as difficult as Scrap Brain Zone, I, I don't think, but still pretty tricky. Oh no! <laughs> Got no rings now. Come on, Tails, get on. at the end, I think, but that's it. Okay. Here comes the boss. Right, watch carefully. There is a... There is an easy way and a quick way. They're not the same thing to deal with this boss. This is the, um... This is the guaranteed way where you definitely won't get hit. Jump over him once. Jump over him again. Ah, alright. Well, in that case, I did get hit. But if you wait there, you'll do that and then they'll level out and then you can hit him. Takes a while, but if you can't be bothered to do that, just take a chance and try and get through his get through his eggs. It gets easier uh, the fewer he has. Also it's easier with Tails helping because uh, if you get hit he might not. And then once you've beaten all these little bubbles, just smack him once. And that's it. So that's the last proper level. Uh, with, you know, axe and everything. Um, from here on it goes into the sky, sky chase zone. And then the wing fortress and then the death egg. Uh, it's, actually, it's actually possible to get 50 rings and become supersonic in this level. It's almost entirely pointless. And uh, liable to get you killed, but it is possible. Um, so, the controls for this one... You have to basically just assume that Tails is always going to catch... He's always going to catch you. You don't have to worry about walking off the wing or anything, because you won't. Unless you're going exceptionally fast, then you might do. Um, you can press up and down on the D-pad to make tails go higher or lower. Uh, most enemies in this level only have one projectile, and once they release it, they won't fire again. So that's worth knowing. Um, uh, I kind of I saw that happening. I did it anyway. Um, oh well, no supersonic in this level. And it goes quiet for a bit while the uh, the wing fortress flies past. Yeah, I'll be on there shortly.
So it's normally a good idea to stay reasonably low. Because otherwise you have a tendency to walk onto things. But then if you're too low, then you can't reach enemies that are higher. Can't reach that one, he's too low. You can tell when those little turtles have fired by their the handle. If the handle is upright, they haven't fired, and if it's diagonal, they have fired. There we go. And that's it. There's no uh, there's no end signpost on that level. Tornado gets hit, and you got to jump off. I am going to blitz through this level the fastest way I know how. Right, check this out. You can just about jump up here. Yep. Grab a shield and then jump and slip through the fan. Cuts out a big chunk of the level. <laughs> and now I've got Super Sonic, so uh, all bits are off. The life. Okay, as long as I keep enough rings going, I'll, uh, I'll be alright. Quite a lot of rings here actually, including one up there, and I believe there's three boxes up here. Just floating in the air, as you do. You can then take a shortcut by jumping over that. Take another shortcut by just jumping over there. Jump up, up, over, and there we are. <laughs> Again, this is another a boss that's much, much harder if you don't have superpowers or rings. I remember this took me so long to beat back in the day working out how to get on the platform without getting spiked on the head. And then when I finally did it, I was like, yes! Extra life in the cockpit. But of course, it's not over. It is far from over. There's one level left. Tornado now has a little jetpack underneath it. Just enough to catch up with him and give Sonic time to jump off. Hold on for dear life and be lifted up into into a low orbit. Into the death egg. You don't really see the death egg other than this little docking bay here. You don't really see it until Sonic 3, but um, you're in it, so that's about it. And this bit of music, I mean, this is it's like a whole Death Egg theme, and it's just used in this one corridor, and then as soon as you enter this room, you, you fight a boss and the music goes away. It's like, why would you bother? I, I reckon there must have been a whole level planned uh, inside the Death Egg that probably got scratched due to time so you don't hear any of this wonderful music. Very strange, but anyway, moving on. Okay, I'm gonna do a spin dash. One, two, three, four. This is, as far as I know, the quickest way to kill this thing. One, two, three, four. That's it. That took me days to work out originally, you know, looking at his pattern of movement, finding out when he turns into a ball, when he dashes across. And you can just jump on his head. Again, this one, you can get over his spikes, but only when they're flat. Like that. Stand to one side. Wait for him to lock on. Move out the way. Get a quick hit and then move because he'll fire his arm at you. We'll then take off, hit him again. Wait for him to come down. Put 
one more hit. All right. I think it takes 12 or 16, I'm not sure which. But there we go, that's it. Game over. The death egg blows up. <sighs> no, lovely little uh, pictograph sequence. How of that would you call it? You know, they're trying to... Um, they were trying to put a bit of narrative into the game, I think. Yeah, it's something that develops over the course of the games. Sonic 3 and Sonic and & Knuckles, of course, have sort of strong narrative elements going on in them. You know, rivalries and betrayals. And Now, of course, if I hadn't collected all the emeralds, I would just be regular Sonic, Tails would catch you. Otherwise, the ending's basically the same. And then they fly off to their next adventure. Roll credits. Cast of characters. Okay. Yeah, so uh, Mark Cerny, um, the PlayStation guy, is uh, credited in Sonic 2. That always amuses me. I don't know why. medley of all the background music playing. I kind of miss the, uh, the Sonic 1 ending where you get all the, sort of the track sequence playing in between the credits. Whereas this is just some credits. Not quite as interesting. But anyway, um, thank you for sticking with me watching this, if you did. Uh, I'm going to do some more of these. I'll probably do Sonic 3 as well. Um, yeah, uh, Sonic 3, Sonic & Knuckles. Those are my favourites. I know them quite well. Um, or maybe I'll do some little um, strategy videos for this game. You know, how to beat the bosses when you're not Super Sonic. Other secrets and things like that. We'll see. But, you know, it's always good to play this one again. Fond memories. Very fond memories of this from uh, back in the 90s. See you later, guys. Thanks for watching.